While magic rocks are packaged many different ways, they are all the same kit, consisting of a small bag of rocks and a packet of sodium silicate, which is mixed with water. The rocks are added to the water and they grow into stalagmites of various colors. While this toy has been around for decades, its actual origins are rather mysterious. The chemical processes that drive the magic rocks phenomena uh, have been known for over 350 years, but it wasn't until the 1940s that it was popularized as a toy. There are two stories about how they came to be. The first is that James and Arthur Inglesby, two brothers, developed the magic rocks toy in 1940. The other story is that they saw a demonstration of a similar toy in a department store in 1940 and de decided to develop their own version of it, which they did and marketed very successfully in 1945. The references about these origins are very scarce and I have not been able to find enough corroboration for one or the other to know which is the true story. The original name, the Ingalls Ingleby Brothers used was Magic Isle Undersea Garden. Later that was shortened to Magic Rocks. The production stayed in the family with James's son Rick taking it over when his father retired and as of 2005 still manufactured them in Sheridan, Wyoming. However, somewhere between 2005 and now he sold the rights and they are now all manufactured in China. This is an average example of what you get after growing magic rocks for 6 to 12 hours and after you've poured off uh, the growing solution which they grow. How it works is that the sodium silicate in solution combines with the metal salts that make up the crystals so that they form a gel which rises and in contact with the sodium silicate hardens. Because of the osmotic pressure, uh, the internal pressure inside these gel tubules is greater than the outside. So the, somewhere along the tube it ruptures, uh, more solution with the uh, uh, metal salt flows out, it hardens, ruptures, uh, extrudes more, and so on, creating the tall, thin spires. The speed of growth is strongly dependent on the temperature of the growing solution. The instructions usually call for 70 degrees. Below that, the structures tend to be shorter and stockier. Above that, they grow faster, taller, skinnier, and more fragile. This example was grown in 85 degree temperature water and it grew in about four hours. Normally it can take six to twelve hours to grow a set of crystals like this. Magic Rock kits originally came with seven different colors of metallic salts that would grow seven different colors of stalagmites. For example, uh, the purple was cobalt chloride, blue is copper copper sulfate, green was commonly chromium chloride, although there is an iron compound that will do the same, and uh, orange is also another form of iron chloride. While the original rocks in Magic Rocks were thin flat sheets that had been broken up, starting sometime after 2005 that changed. The rocks that are now provided are foamy little blocks that are uh, uh, much less dense and actually when you drop them in the solution give off uh, the streams of bubbles. Uh, they're very easy to break up uh, but the color range is much more limited just blue, green, yellow, sort of a yellow and a uh, pale magenta. Uh, they grow co considerably different too. Uh, when these are growing they will tint the growing solution usually a bluish color. The original rocks did not. The growing solution would stay clear. I have a feeling that the new crystals are actually all the same material 
to which a die has somehow been applied, whereas the originals, each one was a different chemical compound. The original Magic Rock kits came with a small two and a half ounce package of sodium silicate that would be mixed with the water with water to create the growing solution. The new ones come with larger 4.5 ounce packages. The difference is I've noticed that the smaller packages have a much thicker uh, sodium silicate solution in them. I assume it, that's because it's higher concentrated and this is uh, much more liquid, much more watery. So I assume this has a higher percentage of water. That's not a bad thing. Sodium silicate it is difficult to mix thoroughly with water. It tends to settle out. By having some of it pre-mixed with uh, a higher percentage of water, it'll make mixing it much easier. The mixing ratios are different too. These usually uh, require a 6 to 1 ratio of water to solution. Uh, these are more like 4 to 1. I think that's enough history and science. Let's grow some crystals. First up, Let's look at the old style, the original hard type magic rocks and see how they grow. The instructions say to add a second layer of rocks once the first layer has stopped growing. As you can see, the first layer didn't grow very much and this is one of the frustrating things about magic rocks is they're very unpredictable. Sometimes the first stack will grow very well, other times not hardly at all. So let's add the second layer of rocks and see if we can make things better. The blue did pretty good, but as you can see the other colors kind of lag behind. Next, let's see how the newer type rocks do. With the exception of the pink, they seem to do a little bit better. Let's add the second layer of rocks and see what happens. Unfortunately, when I added the second layer of rocks, I knocked a lot of the spires over from the first growth. That's one of the problems with this system. The instructions say to break the pieces up into quarter to half inch cubes. I decided to see what would happen if we left a block hole, as it is on the right here, and also took a same size block and broke it up into very small pieces of about an eighth of an inch across. Let's see what happens. That was interesting. The broken up pile took off right away and grew much faster, but in time the single block pretty much caught up. My recommendation would be if you have small children who are watching this, break the uh, clumps up into eighth inch size pieces so they grow faster. Young children get bored quickly and this will help keep them more interested. For the next demonstration, I stacked up three different colors of rocks in a pyramid shape, making sure to leave spaces between them so that the solution could get all the way around them. My goal was to be to grow something that I would call a fairy snow princess castle. Let's see how I did. My granddaughter Julia enjoyed this one. Since any metallic salt should work, I used Epsom salts in the following video. Let's see what happens. That one made me think of albino grass growing very quickly. The last demonstration I like to call Martian Towers. Start by growing two stacks of magic rocks 
with the sodium silicate solution only half filling the growing container. The rocks will grow to the surface, spread out, and create a platform for a second layer of rocks. Fill the growing container to the top with the sodium silicate solution. Lastly, using tweezers, very gently place the second set of growing rocks on the horizontal tabletop created by the first set. And there you have it, the Martian Towers. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you'll pay my main website uh, a visit. Thank you for stopping by.